translation system becomes. So here is the formula. The, uh, the temperature due to the atmosphere is 1 minus 1 over uh, the, uh, the loss to the atmosphere times the medium temperature. And this is approximately 280 uh, Kelvin. Uh, I mean, there are um, ITU. Um, empiric formula available which have been derived over a long, long time uh, of propagation measurement. Uh, so the atmos uh, atmospheric attenuation is alpha times the length of the path and alpha is A times R to the power of, of B. So you can look up for your specific region uh, into, into the handbooks or you can take the, the weather statistics. Okay, so now uh, let's calculate the overall system temperature of our ground station receiver. So this is the antenna temperature plus the um, additional noise contribution by the atmosphere. And as the atmosphere is a lossy line, so we have a bit of loss up front of the LNA. So we have to multiply this by that. So the T LNB gets multiplied uh, by the loss through the atmosphere. So therefore, the overall system temperature degrades twofold. So just to give you here a hint, 2 dB attenuation through the atmosphere is a factor of 1.58. And uh, this translates to additional 100 Kelvin, 102.8 Kelvin um, of noise. Um, I mean, the variations uh, due to the atmosphere at very high frequencies can be very fast, so the slope can be 1 dB per second. Yeah? So other effects, uh, depolarization at very high frequencies. Um, this is a droplet, a rain droplet, uh, which in first iteration is a, uh, is a paraboloid. Um, so therefore, horizontally, we have more water than vertically. Uh, and that means that the horizontal component of our field vector, which is in blue, will be attenuated more than the vertical one. So when I combine the two together, uh, the signal is less, but also the polarization has been turned. Yeah? I mean, for a CubeSat, uh, unless we go to KA band or, or above, uh, it won't matter. But uh, for, for geo satellites, for instance, at KA band uh, or even QV band, then this matters. Scattering exists. Uh, scintillations due to the um, troposphere, but uh, at the lower frequencies, even due to the ionosphere, uh, exist uh, Faraday rotation. If I send electromagnetic wave at lower frequencies through the ionosphere, then the, um, the field vector uh, will be rotated. I mean, uh, the properties of the ionosphere are measured, uh, among others, precisely this way. You send a linearly polarized wave up the ionosphere, it's reflected there, and the reflected wave will be turned. Yeah? And the, the angle of rotation is a, is a measure of, uh, of the properties of the ionosphere. This way you can, can measure that. Okay, now let's go to the C over N on the downlink. So we have the EIRP of the satellite, minus polarization losses, minus free space loss on the downlink, minus pointing loss on the downlink, atmospheric loss, uh, uh, ionospheric loss, plus the figure of merit of the ground station, minus Boltzmann constant, uh, minus system bandwidth, G over T of ground is uh, receive antenna gain, minus 10 log of the system uh, temperature. And uh, now let's take the figures, uh, what we already had from before. Uh, EIRP minus 4 dB watt, polarization loss 1.5 dB, pointing loss 0.5 dB, ionospheric loss 0.7, LNB noise temperature 120 Kelvin, uh, 1 dB loss with filter and a cable in between, atmospheric attenuation 2 dB. And then when we insert uh, that here, first of all, here we calculate our uh, LNB, low noise block uh, temperature. So this is uh, the loss up front. The 1 dB contributes to 75 uh, Kelvin. Uh, this is a factor of 1.258 times 120 Kelvin of the LNA. So 226 for the low noise block. And then system temperature, 50 Kelvin for the antenna. Uh, this is the contribution due to the attenuating atmosphere. Uh, this is the 
uh, L and B temp uh, temperature, but this has to be multiplied by 1.58. This is exactly the attenuation factor of the atmosphere. So 510 Kelvin, hmm? quite high. Um, the G over T, so I mean, uh, the LNA, I say, great, I have a 200 or 120 Kelvin LNA, but there are a lot of things come in. Yeah? However, if we would put the LNA directly uh, at the antenna feed, then we get rid of that, and then we would be close to 120 Kelvin, because we can, can easily save some, some 80, 90 Kelvin here. So the figure of merit here with 18 dB antenna gain is minus 9 dB uh, per Kelvin. And now, um, yeah, uh, here, uh, this had already how to calculate if I have a parabolic dish, the gain. And we now calculate uh, the C over N of the downlink, uh, taking these figures here, and then we have 12.53 dB <coughs> of signal uh, to noise ratio. But that's not the end. Um, now let's, let's look at the, um, that's uh, C over N, overall C over N, not C over N naught. So um, this is composed, let's assume we have a transponder and the signal we are sending up, uh, we are just amplifying and sending down. Yeah? So then the overall signal to noise ratio is one over C over N naught to the power of minus one for the uplink plus C over N naught minus one of the downlink. Yeah? And the effect of that is that the combination of the two is worse than the worst of the two. Yeah? Of course, because we are not amplifying the signal on board, we're amplifying the noise as well. So just to take uh, the figures, uh, we had 26.5 dB uh, signal to noise ratio on the uplink. We have 12.5 dB on the downlink. We, okay. uh, we put that in uh, the formula here. Uh, and then the combined signal-to-noise ratio, because the uplink uh, is so high, is 12.3 uh, dB. All right. Um, but also, there may be co-channel or uh, adjacent channel interference. So in this formula, we have to take into account the C over I as well, yeah? depending on which environment we operate. I mean, that can be a very limiting factor. So then... Um, Let's assume we have not an analog system, we have a digital <coughs> communication system. Uh, then we would calculate uh, the energy per bit over noise density. So we have to multiply C over N times B over R, R information rate, B the system uh, bandwidth. So EB over N naught, if the bandwidth uh, is identical to uh, the uh, information rate, then this factor would be one and we have 12.3. Uh, dB EB over N naught. And now let's assume with a coded system and for every channel, uh, sorry, uh, for every information bit, we're transmitting two bits on the channel. So for instance, uh, we're using half rate convolutional coding, a very popular thing in satellite communications. Uh, then uh, this B over R is a factor of two or three dB. So EB over N naught would be 15.3 uh, dB. And here comes something very important. Um, be careful when you come to your system EB over N naught. Let's look at this. This is, for instance, the uh, bit error performance curve as a function of the of EB over N naught for BPSK, as a, a two-phase shift keying or quadrature phase shift keying. It's, it's the same in bit error rate. Um, you come up at let's say 12 dB EB over N naught system EB over N naught. However, the demodulator, if the code rate is one half, runs at twice the rate. So the signal to noise ratio at the modem is 3 dB less. It's here. Yeah? That's okay if your synchronizers still work. However, let's assume uh, 12 minus 3 would be 9 dB. So this is the uh, C over N the demodulator sees. But if the demodulator requires, as a minimum, 10 dB signal-to-noise ratio uh, to properly synchronize, we are lost. Because then it would just deliver rubbish to the decoder, and rubbish in will give rubbish out. Yeah? 
So here is just uh, different modulation schemes. This is simple error rate uh, for different modulation schemes. So this you can take whatever you design and then feed it into your link budget. Um, and in the end, the system margin is important. Um, let's say uh, we're using, we are using uh, UPSK or BPSK uh, with half rate uh, convolutional coding, viturbity coding with 1 dB uh, implementation loss because we don't have a perfect demodulator. Uh, then we would need some 7 dB for a bit error rate of 10 to the minus 6. Okay? And then the margin would be um, the, uh, the given EB over a naught minus the required EB over a naught. So in our case here, uh, we have uh, 8 dB system margin. Yeah? I mean, the calculation was done here uh, at 1,000 kilometers. Yeah? Uh, now, if we go to the edge, let's say at 2,000 kilometers, we're losing 6 dB. Then we have uh, only 2, uh, 2 dB, 2.3 dB. Uh, system margin, and uh, if there's more <coughs> rain, then mm, we could get uh, at some point into trouble. All right, so um, that was uh, in one hour and 10 minutes compressed what I typically teach to my students uh, in about six hours. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, absolutely, I mean, uh, there's no problem. I have no doubt that uh, all the information flow was uh, positively absorbed. Are there any questions at this point? I mean, uh, I repeat, uh, this is not yet on the stick, but uh, it's available on the downlink, uh, and Attila will give you the link. However, now um, I have uh, a, few, uh, a few Excel sheets, and uh, we'll play a little bit around with that, because I think we have uh, yes. another 20 minutes. As, as I say always, proof of the pudding is in eating, Proof yes. of the link budget is in Excel spreadsheet. Let's uh, yeah. I would say it even furthermore, uh, proof of the system is the measurement in the end. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <coughs> yes, please, Pranjo. Maybe I have a short question, a comment, that uh, we should calculate also with the communication system if we will communicate duplex or simplex. We should calculate also the time for switching to receiver and transmitter when we are calculating the whole capacity of the... Yes, okay. I mean, uh, this is here uh, quite uh, simple. I mean, uh, we can increase the complexity as we like, depending on what the transmission scheme, what the uh, multiple access scheme is, etc. But here, I mean, I wanted to show you, and in most cases, uh, you have uh, a command link. Yeah? So there is, uh, is one carrier frequency with a certain bandwidth, and you want to see whether I get my data through to the, uh, to the spacecraft properly. Yeah? So, um, I have prepared uh, some, some Excel sheet, uh, which you uh, will also get, and you are you're welcome to, to use them. Let me just see. I'm not really check name, but also the windows. I'm learning, I'm learning. You are learning, yes. I must improve, definitely. <laughs> okay. So, um, now I'm, I remember uh, there was a, I believe it was the Vancouver uh, IAC, and uh, this was after 9-11, uh, and everybody had got not badges like this, but badges like that, so that you could read uh, from, from long distance the name of the person. And, uh, okay. and I was just walking on the corridor, and a nice lady approached me uh, and started to talk to me in Czech, and I said, I'm very sorry. Uh, it's a shame, but you must, have, you must switch to English or, or German. I said, ah, oh, I just thought you have a Czech name, so... <laughs> Anyway, <clears throat> so uh, here is the Excel sheet, and uh, here, can, can you read that even from the back? Not too small? Okay. Uh, maybe we can, we can make it a little bit. Yes, please. So uh, we, on to our student, we also present a second link budget, it's just for the sensitivity. Yeah. So this is also very Yeah, of simple. course. I mean, uh, the other point is, uh, I have uh, simplified it here a bit. Uh, the other thing is, uh, what is the power level at the input uh, of your receiver? You have to 
Yes, uh, not only signal-to-noise ratio, but, uh, but I mean, from, from the formula you have uh, 